and you can follow me home and I'm just going to leave the door unlocked, like ac- quote unquote accidentally. Um, and then you can come in and you can rate me. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanagato. I'm Greg Dybeck. Just want to give a quick shout out to all of our patrons out there. If you sh- sign up for our Patreon, you do get to support the show as well as getting uh, extra episodes and sometimes follow-up episodes with our previous guests. Yes, thank you to all the patrons of the show. And before we get into chatting with today's guest, uh, obviously want to offer just kind of a quick warning here. Uh, the topic is rape. We'll be discussing rape. We understand that might trigger some listeners, so just want to give a heads up there. Uh, but we've got our guest on the line right now. So thanks so much for being on the show today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys for having me. Of course. So I think uh, on the surface, the idea of rape fantasy, it's hard to fathom. Um, I think most people agree rape is probably one of the most heinous acts that can be committed. Of course, it's a genuine constant fear of women all over the world. So really curious how you first came to realize that you were interested in uh, what what you refer to as rape fantasies. And can you kind of describe what these fantasies uh, consist of for you? Yeah. Um, so before I kind of go into anything, I just want to say that nothing that I say here will ever like diminish or um, reduce the experiences of actual rape survivors and sexual assault survivors. Um, like you said, obviously that's horrible. Um, and no one in the rape fantasy community um agrees with that um so i just wanted to get that out there um for your viewers um and basically how i got into this was um it kind of started when i was super super young and i was discovering my sexuality and i kind of started out reading fan fictions of my like favorite actors um, as most like teenage girls do. <laughs> um, and I realized that I wasn't into the fan fictions that were like, oh, like you fall in love with this person and it's like really sweet and romantic. I was into um, like getting kidnapped. Uh, sounds really bad, I know. <laughs> um, like getting kidnapped and like sold to that person and like basically just being used um like as a as a sex slave um and from that point on i i got into porn and i was like watching some stuff like exploring i was on like the gangbang subtype or whatever however you want to call it um and i I realized that I was really turned on by women who seemed like they didn't like it. Um, Like I wasn't interested in the ones where they were like really into it and you know, they're like sucking dick all over and (laughs) all that. Um, I was into the ones where they were like struggling. um, And I think that's what got me kind of thinking like, like what the hell am I into? I was like, am I just into rough sex? Um, Am I into something more? And I kind of got the feeling that I was into the rape fantasy from those things. And from then on, I just spiraled into the community. So I don't mean for this to be, because this is kind of, this might be just like an insane question, but so like the idea of like a rape fantasy, Mm clearly i mean correct me if i'm wrong there is a difference between that it's not that you have a fantasy to actually be raped it is it's more of like a so then what necessarily is the difference between a rape fantasy and someone who just likes rough sex like is it not Mm -hmm. enough for like the choking and like dominating in the bedroom is there something that kind of separates it from everything else that makes it a rape fantasy Yeah, um, I would say that the situations that kind of play out um, in a rape fantasy or rape role play uh, are completely different from just having rough sex. And you can even have 
a rape fantasy and not have it have rough sex. You can have um, like very quote unquote loving sex, but it's the psychological part of um, kind of taking that control away from me uh, and having it because I think there's a lot of a lot of shame placed around women uh, experiencing their sexuality and that really alleviates a lot of the stress with being involved with sex and I if you want I can go into some of the like the role plays that I've set up I don't know if we're there yet in the no, no yeah I, yeah I would I'm definitely interested in that too because I, I yeah. am trying to picture this also because it, it's interesting because it's almost ironic that you yeah, oh yeah you you want a rape fantasy but the whole idea behind rape is that like you also don't want it you know what mm -hmm. i mean yeah so, yeah definitely so, no so yeah i would love to hear about the the scenarios that you've set up like the role play right um so there's kind of the part of me that stays online um and i i've kind of stepped away from that a little bit now but when when i was first getting involved in the community it was definitely uh, a bigger piece of my my sexual role play uh so on online um you can find quote unquote pen pals which um are just people who you find with the same kink as you and you either text or you call each other and you basically just have like phone sex um and you describe scenarios to each other of like what what you would do to me um what i would do what i would do in the situation but I think the the crazier parts, <laughs> the more like uh, ballsy parts, uh, come out when I actually like meet up with people. Um, and so I'll um first we will have this conversation beforehand of basically everything that involves the consent, like um, safe words. We have to go over that, um, like actions that we can do to like stop or slow down the scenario. Um, and then we're pretty much good to go on, I think, but yeah, so as some of the scenarios that I've been involved with that I've set up that appeal to me is that, um, I'll tell the guy that I'm meeting up with that, like, I'm going to be in this Starbucks at this address and I'm going to be wearing, like, I'm going to be wearing this skirt and that's how you'll know it's me. Um, and I want you to come in and just get a coffee briefly, but don't ever like talk to me just so I can like see that you are who you say you are, if, especially if we're meeting off like online. Um, so just get a coffee and get back in your car or whatever. And then I'm gonna leave after that and you can follow me home. And I'm just gonna leave the door unlocked, like ac quote unquote accidentally. Um, and then you can come in and you can rate me. Um, and I know that sounds horrible. Like saying it out loud. <laughs> it's really well, like, <laughs> I um, didn't know. I thought it was just like a role play thing, but this is actually like involving the outdoors in a way of being like yeah. a person's following you home mm -hmm. and then sort of breaking into your apartment sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And there will be scenarios where I'll give a guy like a week where I'm willing to do things and I'll be like, why don't you surprise me when you come in? Um, like you can, you can choose to come in whenever. And so that way it's more of like an excitement for me of like, when is this guy going to show up? Wait, so you're just going about your normal day, but within a week at any point, this quote unquote stranger to an extent will just appear in your house and have his way with you because you've consented to it beforehand, but basically fully mimicking what an actual rape could be. Yeah. Um, the only thing is that in scenarios like that, that I'll set up, um, there will be like checkpoints to make sure that, uh, I am fully comfortable in that moment with going through, mm -hmm. uh, like I'll send him a picture of a top that I rarely wear. And I'll say, like, this is the top that I'm going to wear if I'm, like, not up for anything right now. Um, or I'll put a little, like, a bracelet around my doorknob. And I'll say, like, if this is around there, like, don't, 
don't come in. And I, I like it to be, like I said, like really psychological. So um, in that week, if he wants to like come in when I'm sleeping and like jack off, I think that's really hot. Um, or if he wants to like come in and like move things around or like just make it creepy. Um, I'm really into that. <laughs> How would like, I'm just like, so wait, you just like yeah. leave your door open for a whole week? Yeah, basically. Uh, I mean, when I'm there, you know, um, when I'm not there, obviously I don't want him to, to come in and like rummage through my stuff, but when well, I'm there. So you're even into if a guy sort of comes in in the middle of the night and sort of wakes you up with a rape. Yeah. I mean, kind of, if it's within that span. Um, yeah. So it's, it's like, I was going to say it's like essentially having a stalker for a set period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. And you know, I'll, there are other scenarios too, like, um, wanting to be like pulled into like a van when I'm like walking home and like raped there. Um, it's, there's like, there's just a bunch of bad scenarios that <laughs> really turn me on. Um, and it's, yeah, it's hard to find guys who are like comfortable with that but as yeah i was i was just thinking that like it, i think it would take a certain type of do like i i don't know like for me i'd be like i just I, I, this is a lot like i can't do that like i feel bad but um do you have like i don't know i do you ever get worried that you're putting yourself in a position that maybe it's almost too vulnerable like you say like when you have the bracelet on the door like don't come in mm -hmm. but maybe a guy would feel like well, I'm going to break her rules because that would make it even better. Cause like, mm -hmm. you know, is there, have you ever run into an experience like that? Or are you ever worried about that? Uh, I'm constantly worried about that. Um, that's one of the biggest uh, kind of threats with being involved in this kink in general, or, you know, pretty much any BDSM is that what if your partner is not on the same page with you and what if they take it too far? What if they don't, care you know in the moment when you know things are heated what if they don't give a shit about your um your boundaries you know and i'm 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 always worried when i meet up with someone so i try to be as safe as possible um i have one friend that i really trust that is supportive of my kink and i'll like send her all the information of the guys um and also i have a, l a long period of time before we actually meet up or do anything where I like test the guys or I'll um, I'll just I'll make sure that they're safe I'll kind of like vet them uh, in a way um, so yeah it, it's it is pretty scary uh, it took me a lot of years to actually begin the process of meeting up with people um, and uh, you know a lot of the guys I find on tinder too um, like, you know, there's, there's guys on Tinder who are obviously just there to have sex and mm -hmm. they'll slide into girls DMs and be like, Hey, like come over, like you're hot, you know? Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of message them back and be like, like, I'm down to fuck, but like, I like it rough. Are you down for that? And they'll be like, how rough? And I'll kind of like explain to them the situation and you can gauge how into it they are. Um, and there's you know you have to protect your partner as well like the guys some of them will want me to say like write it down or like give a voice message saying like i consent to this this and this yeah um mm. so yeah it, i mean the entire community really revolves around trust and that can be broken a lot of times i've had some bad experiences uh but nothing too bad so it doesn't really like put me off <laughs> Right. I'm I'm curious in these fantasies and the role play scenarios, do you resist at all? Like like is an initial resistance part of the fantasy too or no? Yeah, um I I pretty much resist the whole time and I let I let the guy know. I'm like like I kind of don't play around in this situation like yeah, I'm going to be fighting back. Um not not like obviously like I don't want to hurt them or I don't want to make it too hard to actually like do you like run out of the room <laughs> sorry 
Do you like run out of the room and like you just gotta chase you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Sometimes, like there was this one time where um, I was meeting with one of my like regular guys and he like showed up on the steps to my house um, like when I was like taking out the trash and I like quote unquote freaked out. (laughs) I ran back in and I like couldn't shut the door on him and he like forced his way in and I was like trying to defend myself um, and yeah, so I, I fight back and I let them know beforehand and there are some times where, you know, they'll say like the code yellow word um, and that just means to like slow down and they'll be like, hey, like, can you ease up? Cause I don't think we're getting anywhere. <laughs> right, um, yeah. It's like I'm getting tired running around the dining room table. <laughs> right, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, but these guys are pretty much using full strength at this point so it's the actions are as close to the real thing as they could possibly be it seems obviously the difference being consent and vetting beforehand Mm -hmm. yeah definitely Uh, like i'll be i'll cry sometimes and scream um and that's that's a turn on for me personally (laughs) some of the guys don't like it and so i won't do it um, do, do your neighbors have your neighbors ever like been like hey you good we heard some <laughs> stuff <laughs> um no so far no <laughs> yeah why does your house keep getting broken into <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like, who are these <laughs> suspicious guys walking in at 2 a.m um no no i i live alone uh no one has said anything um which is low-key concerning because what <laughs> what if this actually happens that too Um, yeah so yeah no but no no one said anything luckily that would be hard to explain when you're crying and and screaming is that an act that you kind of have to force yourself to put on or are you true are you truly feeling those emotions in the moment do you feel fear obviously excitement because it's what turns you on but you know does that just sort of does it happen naturally are you are you that in the moment uh it it depends on like how into the fantasy i am getting obviously but a lot of the times it will it will just happen um it's i kind of explain it to going down like a roller coaster uh like even if you prepare yourself and you know it's coming and you've ridden that roller coaster like a thousand times you know when you're going down you still get the butterflies and you still like freak out a little bit you know or like going through a haunted house you know it's all fake Mm -hmm. but you still like scream you know um and so it's it's kind of similar to that okay interesting well wow uh this uh i'll be honest i've never heard of this before so it's it's interesting i Obviously, I'm sure it's, you know, would be considered controversial in many ways or or difficult for you to just talk openly to anyone about this. And I'm curious, like, where does something like this intersect with feminism? Or, you know, would you consider yourself a feminist, even though, you know, you partake in in this role play? Yeah, so it's really interesting that you say you've, like, never heard of this. And a a lot of guys haven't. But I was reading... um, some like research articles back when I was like really really ashamed of this and I was like why the hell do I have this kink and actually apparently apparently like 30 to 50 percent of women have had fantasies in the past of being forced not straight up raped but they've had like forced fantasies um so it's I've found a lot of comfort in the rape community um especially in women's groups in that community and you may not like think this is true but a lot of the people in the rape community are rape survivors um the women and they from what they've explained to me is that it's a coping mechanism for them and it's a way to kind of like relive their their trauma but in a controlled way so that they can eventually heal from it and there's some really good youtube videos on youtube of how to be a good feminist and also be into rape fantasy because it's it seems really like 
like how could you do that you know like how could you want to bring women up in the world and like support the me too movement and all that while also going home and like being into all this all this rape you know <laughs> um and so it, it is hard to balance but from the support that i've gotten from the survivors and just from other women in the community the biggest or the main thing is this all revolves around consent and so as soon as you take away a piece of that it's no longer a fantasy and it's no longer um what the community supports no longer what you support uh so i think that that really like helps me draw the line in my head you know yeah no that that makes sense and at the end of the day of a fantasy just just the word fantasy it's you know these are two separate things it obviously doesn't mean that you condone these actions in real life or anyone forcing themselves you know onto anyone else but yeah i think um you know it's it's interesting and you mentioned this before of you kind of said i guess one of the explanations for this fantasy or reasons for enjoying this fantasy is it kind of um a woman gets to like avoid uh i guess that guilt that you mentioned where they can kind of say like oh this wasn't my fault and i guess you know one thing i guess you kind of can't talk about this without talking about sort of the double standard put on women and the idea of this like sexual guilt and like slut shaming and you know these things still exist like okay sure society is a little more woke but you know not completely woken up so clearly uh, women are walking around you know with this guilt of uh, not knowing how to express themselves sexually all the time or not fully being comfortable discussing things and especially a fantasy like this so uh, you know i guess in that sense like you said before it's just sort of oh this happened to me you know this wasn't this wasn't my fault. Like I, I had sex, I had this sexual experience, but I didn't go out of my way for it. I guess could be some of the psychology behind the fantasy. Yeah, um, I think like what you said about women not being able to express their sexual feelings, That's that played a big part for me. Um, also because I'm Asian and that is not talked about at all, like at all in like families at all. <laughs> And so I think as I was growing up, I really didn't have any way to even say like, oh, I, I even like a boy at school, you know? And so this takes a lot of the, the guilt from feeling my own urges, you know, away from me. And also uh, there's, uh, there's a couple like, if you are more interested or if your viewers are more interested, they can go on Google and just search why do women have rape fantasies and it comes up with a bunch of reasons and another one is that there's something sexy about feeling like you're just like irresistible like a guy will do literally anything to have you in that moment even if it involves like breaking the law um, so I, I think there's a lot of reasons but those are the main two do you and think that you know I, actually are you I wanted to rephrase that question. Like, are you still turned on by quote unquote regular sex or does it have to have some form of, you know, force or rape involved mm -hmm. for you to like orgasm? Um, I'm, uh, I'm not really into regular sex anymore. Um, I, I guess I never was in the first place. I was never turned on, um, by like my ex-boyfriends just being really vanilla i guess um so i would always try to incorporate things like just him being a little bit rough or um maybe i would like like in my head i would say like i don't want this and so it would kind of help me like break that barrier um into my fantasy without like straight up saying to my boyfriend like like i don't want this you know like this is part of my rape fantasy so i i kind of make it like seem like that in my head um i don't know if that is a good explanation <laughs> yeah no and it, it's interesting so for the person if you eventually would want to settle down with one person it would be required that your sex life is focused on you know rape fantasies and this type of role play 
Uh, it would it would definitely have to be around around some sort of uh, BDSM under like that bubble, you know. Uh, it doesn't mm. necessarily have to be rape all the time, but that's the thing that gets me going like the most, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, he would have to be open to it for sure. Uh, but I, you know, it's weird because I've never actually brought it up to any of my boyfriends, like straight up. Uh, that I'm into rape. I've always just said like, oh, I like rough sex. And that's it. That's like the extent that I'll go because I'm, I'm just like, like, I don't want them to get the wrong idea, you know? So, so the next person that you date, are you planning on like telling them or are you still kind of going to keep it to yourself? No, no, I think I'm going to keep it to myself. Um, it's, it, it, it is hard to like, balance this in my real life i've really only told that one like girlfriend that i have um and i just don't want people to see me any differently because i live a very like in my career i have a a, a career where i have to kind of tell people what to do all the time like i kind of have to like boss them around um and i don't want them my boyfriends to feel like i want to be degraded at all or i want to be that i don't know it's it's hard to explain like right now we're having an open conversation but if you're actually involved like if you picture your significant other saying all of this it's a completely different story like you start to wonder like oh like what trauma have they been through <laughs> that like makes them feel this way or, or any of that and i i worry about that stuff if i ever would bring it up to a boyfriend yeah, that's I, th I think that's fair. Obviously, this is something that would carry, you know, a big stigma uh, for people just hearing it. And e even just having this conversation, I mean, it it definitely requires some brain power to separate, you know, rape from the rape fantasy. And even you just saying a few minutes ago, like to, you know, tell my boyfriend that I'm into rape, obviously understanding that you're not into rape and you're not supporting rape. But you know, even using a sentence like that, it, it, there's sort of this like neurological disconnect where you got to like step back and say, oh, okay, wait, like this is the fantasy. This is the consensual role play. But um, to, to your point before, uh, I, I did look and there really are a ton of studies. I mean, dating back to the 70s, the 80s, recent studies um, of where this is one of the most common fantasies that female test subjects had um, and like you said maybe not using rape specifically um, but that kind of dominating overpowering um, one study in 1998 I think it was found over half of the participants had engaged in fantasies of rape specifically so this is is clearly something that people are fantasizing about um, just seems like not something everyone who's fantasizing about uh everyone who does fantasize about it is talking about uh so i guess that's why that you know disconnect is there but it it does seem like a common thought for sure yeah definitely and it's it's weird because you know a lot of women will have these fantasies but uh, i think it is appropriate in some scenarios that we choose our language carefully when we are speaking about this publicly like it like in our conversation right now, um, I would never want what I say about my own personal turn ons to ever be applied to like a woman in public, like how she's dressing, like, oh, she wants it, you know, that that's like my biggest fear. And I was having a lot of anxiety um, concerning this call because I was like, how do I word my language in order to make sure that I draw that line um, and really stress the consent portion of this. Like there's checkpoints uh, literally at every, every step of the way for both myself and my partner. Um, so it, it is really difficult to talk about this as a woman. I feel like you don't want to uh, farther the, the stigma that women are asking for rape, you know, yeah, and I also think that you did a good job in the beginning of this of kind of putting that out there like at first because, I mean, like I was asking you before, there is a fine line between, you know, a rape fantasy mm -hmm. that does require consent, obviously, yeah. and an actual rape. There's still, like, the consent is the thing that changes that whole thing. So, I mean, I, 
you also, I think, have to understand. Like, I think there will be a couple of people that may be like, you know, like uh, not agree with this or not, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that you know, especially on this show and the community that we've created, like a lot of people, they're open-minded and they're not very judge judgmental. And I think people just need to remember that there is consent involved in this, even though that it is a fantasy. I mean, we've been doing the show long enough to know that, you know, everyone out there is into something, you know, and mm -hmm. for whatever reason, it's not always this big traumatic event that has happened or whatever. It's just something yeah. that's sort of innate in people um, and they choose to indulge in. So, I don't think that, you know, you should be too worried um, about, you know, what you're doing. But I do understand, you know, your concern of being like, I don't want to say the wrong thing because I'm really not like condoning this. Right, um, right. But, you know, it is something that does kind of turn you on. So it's like yeah. how you're, you know, going about it, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And I, li I like to compare it to things like you know like how you go on Pornhub and there's a lot of like oh like my stepsister did this or my stepmom did this I think a lot of the people who like watch that stuff they don't actually want to they don't actually support like incest you know but right. it's the fantasy that gets them off and it's mm -hmm. really similar to to my own in that way yeah exactly there's people who are into giant green aliens coming down and and having orgies with them like it doesn't mean that's what you want to happen <laughs> in real life um but yeah and and obviously you know i'm sure this is a fantasy that a lot of men have too on the other end to be that dominating to you know and something sensitive. yeah totally a lot of guys who are who just want to be raped by a bunch of women or yeah one woman and you know i it, it happens both ways like women can be the the perpetrators in this fantasy too yeah that that makes a lot of sense and yeah this obviously you know should not be misconstrued or, or used to say you know see women do think this and women do want that because that would be just immature and and dumb and this doesn't you know uh, this shouldn't discredit any rape victims or anyone that's you know any survivor that's coming out and speaking about this uh clearly but wow this was uh very eye-opening yeah <laughs> there's there's a lot that isn't talked about <laughs> yeah do you um <laughs> so do you have any of these role plays planned or do you plan on doing one in the near future are you like how how often and you know what What's your schedule look like, I guess? <laughs> yeah. Um, so in my Google calendar, no. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I was just like, holy shit. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so I, I do have a couple of guys who I have explored this in the past with. And basically, whenever I do want to set up something, they're they're willing to. And I, I can always you know sometimes things get like too personal and i see this guy like too often that it doesn't become scary anymore uh so i have to go on tinder and i have to find a new guy or i have to go on like the pen pal website and find a new guy in my area um so i usually participate in one of these like bigger ish fantasies every couple of weeks i would say wow uh, so wait i so after you guys have sex mm -hmm. do you guys just not have any communication because that would <laughs> not like do it for you like you like all right just like leave now like do they leave like as if like they're still role playing after mm -hmm. you know the after you guys have sex they just like leave so if you got if you establish like an actual relationship or rapport with this person you're like oh, i can't do it anymore it doesn't do it for me yeah. Uh, ha have you have you guys heard of aftercare at all? No. No. So it's it's really big in the the BDSM community, and it's basically like a a, a pointed time after you are both involved in a fantasy where um, you just take like an hour to reflect on like how comfortable it was for you guys and make sure both of you guys are okay mentally and you both know that it was just a fantasy. So I, I know a lot of people, almost everyone is involved with some aftercare, I would say in this, uh, 
in this community because you are dealing with really difficult things um, as the victim and, uh, you know, and as the dominant, you know, it's, it's not always fun to pretend like you're, you're hurting someone, <laughs> even if you're into it. Um, and it's not always fun to be hurt. Um, so I, usually I will participate in some aftercare. And then after that, I usually don't text them again or don't call them, don't see them unless it is to set up another meeting. Uh, wow. So I, I do like that, that anonymity that comes with it. Cause mm-hmm. I think it adds, uh, it adds more excitement. Yeah. That's, that's, that's cool to hear. I, yeah. We, we haven't heard about that, but right. It's kind of just that mental health check after, because you know, the, a scenario like that, I imagine could be emotionally, you know, traumatizing in, in certain ways you're going through a lot. And like you said, even though there's clearly an aspect to this that you enjoy, you know, you said early on, it's like, why do I have this kink? You know, why, why do I have this desire inside of me? This, this itch that I need to scratch. So it's not, you know, just something that, uh, you know, it's something that if you feel like you have to do, it's nice to have that, you know, kind of check in on the mental health side, you know, after and make sure that both parties are okay. So that, that's really interesting to hear. And, um, you know, I, d- I did want to ask because you just <laughs> said that, you know, besides the, um, or I guess finding new partners when you need to, would that affect a long-term relationship for you? If you found one person that you want to settle down with, would you fear that they wouldn't be able to play that role for you because they would become too familiar in your life? I, I've definitely thought about that a lot. Um, you know, eventually I, I'm in my late twenties now and eventually I do want to settle down with someone. Um, and I, you know, I feel like with everyone who has sex, you have to keep things fresh in a, in a long-term relationship, you know? And me personally, I'm always worried that things are just going to like fizzle out too early because of this, uh, like urge. And especially if I don't tell them that I'm into this, uh, I feel like I might not be getting the gratification, um, like full gratification, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's definitely a worry of mine. Um, I'm going to have to cross that bridge eventually (laughs) whenever it happens. Yeah, I, I guess there's nothing else you could do. I mean, you know, I think, sure, maybe you're, sex life is a little more extreme than others but you know i think that goes with any settling down for anyone or marriage i mean you know there's just things you have to navigate when when it comes um but wow thank you so much for you know describing this and being so honest about this uh because like we said you know we had no idea and i think you really gave us a strong understanding of you know, both what this is, uh, in general, in terms of the community that's out there, uh, but mostly, you know, what this is for, for you and your personal experiences. And, you know, I think you just did a really good job of, you know, separating, uh, the fantasy from what rape is in the real world and that this doesn't justify rape in any way or attribute anything positive, you know, to rape. So thank you for that. I, I appreciate you guys giving giving me a platform to talk about this because I feel like it's, since it's so like hush hush among women, um, I think it's important to at least you know acknowledge it and have an open conversation. I guess. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, again, we we really appreciate it because you know this is not something that you've you know expressed to a lot of people. So we appreciate <laughs> and you know we're honored that you'd come on and and kind of talk about it and kind of educate people on you know, this sort of thing, because I guess it is, it is a very taboo sort of, uh, fetish. Yeah. Um, and if, if it is that taboo that people aren't a talk, don't talk about it or are afraid to talk about it, then, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's good that now we can get it out to people so they can sort of learn and try to understand it better. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. And you know, if anyone has any, uh, like reservations about it, they can always just like hop on Google and do their own research. And I'm sure, people who actually write articles about it and the women who like think this through and aren't just on a, a random conversation. I'm sure they can explain it more eloquently. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Uh, have a good rest of your day.
All you right, too. You too. Bye. All right, we just want to thank Honey for sponsoring our episode of Other People's Lives here. Uh, Honey, if you don't know about it, it's a free browser extension that will save you money. All right, so all you have to do is download it. It's free, and it automatically applies coupons to your cart when you're shopping on sites like Amazon or Sephora or Best Buy or pretty much everywhere, to be honest with you. Um, but, yeah, so it saved over 10 million members, over a billion dollars in savings. I mean, I've been shopping on Amazon, and then the little thing will pop up, and I'll click on it to apply a coupon, and I'll be saving money. Okay, I've saved $40 at a time sometimes. So it, it really does put money in your pocket. Also, the holidays are coming up, so this is going to be very useful for you in this holiday season when you're spending a lot of money and doing a lot of online shopping, all right? So definitely download Honey. Like I said, it's free. I don't know why you wouldn't download it because it's just going to save you money, more money in your pocket when you shop with Honey, okay? That's not their tagline, but it should be. Um, but it's free, again, and it just installs in two clicks very quick. Um, and you can get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash OPL. Again, that is joinhoney.com slash OPL, spelled J-O-I-N-H-O-N-E-Y dot com slash OPL to get it for free. Start saving money. Our next sponsor is Native Deodorant. I love Native. I've been using it for months now, and I promise you I have no plans of switching anytime soon. And Native doesn't just block odor, uh, but it's made with better ingredients, which is something that I care a lot about. I like to know that I'm not putting anything harmful on my body. And they have 10 amazing scents. I just started using lavender and rose, which let me tell you is as lovely as it sounds. And uh, native, it just feels better on the body. Uh, it's not too wet. It's not too like hard or clumpy. Uh, it kind of just has that perfect feel and it lasts all day long and smells amazing. And this won't make me sound cool, but I like this company so much that I literally wait for their newsletter to, to come out so that I can read it for announcements, offers, things like that. And Native is risk-free to try. Every product comes with free shipping within the U.S., plus free 30-day returns and exchanges. So see why so many people love Native. You can check out over 14,000 five-star reviews. That doesn't happen by accident, let me tell you. And uh, do what I did and make the switch to Native today. Uh, just go to nativedeo.com slash OPL uh, or use the promo code OPL at checkout uh, and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash OPL or just use the promo code OPL at checkout for 20% off your first order. Well, that was heavy. <laughs> that didn't go the way that I was that I thought it was going to go literally at all. My I mean, I feel bad but my mouth was was so open when she was explaining the role plays. Jaw was on the floor. I, I did not expect that. Shocked when she talked about being in public and then like setting it up from there like i thought this was going to be something like you're already in the bedroom and like you have mm. some sort of relationship and you're just into them just like maybe saying some rapey shit i don't even know what that would really even be to be honest with you but like you know whatever um but the the fucking leaving the door open for a week and that like you know how we talk about usually when we do fetishes it's like there's levels to fetishes this mm. one i feel like we have maxed out like this is a, a a rape fetish at its like high, highest form. Yeah, I, I mean this is it's so intricate. Like logistically, the planning, like to yeah. to put this together, to find the right person, to vet the right person. Um, because you're right, I think that it's instinctively you feel afraid even hearing about this scenario that she set up, and that was the question that you asked. Like, do you do you feel like you could just be in danger because you're letting someone into you know your world you're literally leaving your door open for uh, a stranger yeah um, but you know i guess that vetting process is is so important getting to know um like she said with starbucks like getting to see them put the face you know to match it up so really you know complex there's, there's a lot of like oper like operations like moving parts you know behind setting this up but she also does it every few weeks that's a lot of work I was just going to say, in a way, I feel bad for her because she's saying, like, I'm not really into regular sex anymore. It's like, every time you want to have sex now, it's got to be this whole fucking thing. And not only that, but once you find a guy who's, like, really good at it, if he gets too good at it, you're like, oh, this sucks now. 
Like, there's a lot of work involved. It, uh, yeah, I would imagine I would it, it complicates. I would, I would never be able to do this, by the way. I would never, not even at, get close. As a man, like, if, if it was would never. requested of you? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to. I would, I would start crying. I would feel like, you know, I'd feel so bad. Yeah. It, I it can, would. like, fake break in and, like, you know, whatever. But if you're, like, saying, like, you're crying, like, I, I just, I, you know. No, I, the, it's it's a lot of you know whatever, but it's you know it's a thing. But like, and I just want to say also, and I already said this, but I think she did a good job, and I don't want anyone to uh, like attack her, attack her, and feel like that she's supporting rape. Clearly, there's a difference here. Like, if if you think that, I I really think that you're not, you know, thinking about this enough. Like, there is consent, there is safe words, as there is in in all of these you know fetishes that people maybe don't understand. Um, but this one is a little more heavy because it is like a felony and it's a crime and it's a horrible thing to do with a person and it's traumatizing. And now to just be signing up for it in a way is, I, I can see how that's strange to people and it's how it's like, you want to have this gut reaction of like, this is fucked up, mm -hmm. right? But she did give a good example about the stepmom thing where it's like, not everyone wants to bang their actual stepmom. It's just that it's it's a weird thing that turns you on in the moment when you're watching porn or something. Yeah, it's, it, you know, a, a fantasy is a fantasy. A fantasy takes place in your head, and a fantasy can be anything. Like, I, we can't police people's fantasies or thoughts. Um, right. But, yeah, it, it is, it's hard to digest, and it's, you know, hard to understand, but she did do a good job. But I think what makes it complicated is, like, the language crossover. You know, it's like... Yeah, I almost wish there were like different words for it because it's so... And it so... wasn't rape. It was like... <laughs> I know. Like ripe or something. Like no. close, but... <laughs> or like forceful sex would be better than rape. But she's being honest. I mean, the fantasy is rape. It is. And, I didn't know how scenarios. much rape it was because it's yeah. a lot of... It's a lot. Like it's yeah. like the... The door thing, it was just shocking to me, man. Like, that is like a whole new level of, you know, you really want the fear involved and the surprise, sort of. I also don't even know how no one's ever said a word about this. Like, if she's screaming in there and screaming, like, stop or whatever. Actually, I don't know if she says those words, but um, no yeah. one's going to, like, hey, be like, hey, everything cool over here, you know? Like, that's that's scary, Well, man. but that says something about our society, too. Isn't there, I forget what that uh, study was, but it's like most people just look the other way or if they hear a scream, you know, or go in the other direction. But that's that's a different thing. Different um, episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, yeah. That, that, was a, that was a wild, uh, wild ride there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just like any other fetish video we've we've done, this is just you know, educational. I honestly didn't know it went that far. Like I said, I learned yeah. about, I feel like we're at the highest form here. Like this is like a, you know, a valedictorian <laughs> at, the, at the fetish level. Is, right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, but again, it's, it's just worth noting. And I believe her when she says this with, with the way she described everything, you know, this does not condone or justify rape in any way. Right. This does not put rape in in a positive light um yeah i i, I, also, I truly believe her when she says that she is an individual and just because there is women out there i will say a not a majority a minority of women out there that have rape fantasy does not mean that's what women are into and to exactly. have that sort of mentality is not only scary, but it's ridiculous. To be like, see, women do like, like, no, that's not. That is an individual person. Yeah, that this all would be taken so out of context if someone uses that as an example, like I said before, to, you know, discredit someone who, right. uh, you know, a survivor who came out and, and just think, oh, but they were into it in the moment. That's what they like. They just changed their mind afterwards. Like, that's not, yeah. not what this is. Right. Well uh lovely episode very interesting um but yeah anyone out there if you would like to be on the show send us an email head to our website oplshow.com send us an email and we go through all of them if we think it fits for the show we'll call you we'll schedule something up and uh get you on there yeah follow us on instagram at opl podcast and 
Patreon at patreon.com slash OPL show. Help support the show directly, and you get a ton of bonus episodes. And that is all. Yep, that is all. See you guys next time. Thank you.